oak wilt disease caused by oak and brochure beetles. And it's uh, a disease that's affecting many trees in Japan, but at the ICU campus in particular. So in this presentation, first we'll take a brief look on the Konara oak. Like what is it? What's the significance of this tree? Later we'll look at the oak ambrosia beetle itself. And we'll talk about the wilt disease that it's causing. And finally, we'll think about some countermeasures that can be taken to prevent it or to fight with it. So first, uh, let's look at the Konara oak, Quercus serrata. So the Konara oak is an oak. It belongs to the Quercus genus, and that belongs to the Fagate family. And there's around 500 species of oaks. Uh, in the world, there's, there's around 500 species of oaks. And in Japan, 15 or 16 are considered native. And Quercus serrata, Konara, is one of the more important oak species in Japan. Here we can see a map of distribution of the oak genus in the world. As we can see, it's found mostly in forests of the northern hemisphere. And the Konara oak can be found uh, in Japan, in all, in all of Japan, but also in the Korean Peninsula, eastern China, and the Kuru Islands. So here's how the oak looks like. Uh, like many oaks, it has serrated leaves. Uh, like all oaks, the, the fruit of the tree are acorns. And the bark, the trunks of the tree, are quite characteristic with those graphite gray vertical stripes. So what's the significance of of the Konara oak. First, I want us to think about the economic significance. The majority of oaks produce very highly valued wood. Uh, the wood is quite hard, uh, heavy, and sturdy. As such, it is excellent for uh, making furniture. It's it's very important uh, wood, very often used for floorings. However, it, it is also used for making charcoal due to its high energy density. It's one of the best types of wood for charcoal production. And in Japan, another application is cultivating mushrooms. In particular, mushrooms like shiitake uh, require dead wood as a substrate for cultivation. And Konara is one of the most used species for that purpose. And what's the ecological significance? Well, oaks, all oaks, are the most important broadleaf trees in Japanese forests. Around 50% of Japanese forests are either broadleafed or mixed. And a a significant portion of them, uh, the majority of them, include oaks. And 10% of Japanese forests have oaks as the dominant tree species, the most uh, represented tree species. As such, we can see how important they are for forest ecosystems in Japan. And another thing is that oaks and the acorns they produce are an important food source for many forest animals. And acorns, quite similar to nuts, actually, are high in calorie content. As such, are quite important. And last but not least, oaks are ectomycorrhizal. So, as such, they 
create niches for ectomycorrhizal fungi that can that require ectomycorrhizal hosts for for the symbiotic lifestyle. Uh, oaks are necessary for some for some fungi like that. Many ectomycorrhizal fungi are host specific, so if the right host uh, is not growing in a given forest, then the fungus also can't live there. Uh, additionally, there are some plants that interact with ectomycorrhizal fungi and require ectomycorrhizal fungi for them to be established. Um, probably the main example of that are orchids. So orchids require, they form orchid mycorrhiza, but the fungal partners are usually ectomycorrhizal fungi. So without an oak, the ectomycorrhizal fungus wouldn't be able to be in that environment, and without the fungus, the orchid also wouldn't be able to grow them. So second, I would like to take a quick look at the oak ambrosia beetle, and that is Platypus quercivorus. It's a funny name, quercivorus. Literally, it means oak eating, like quercus, like quercus right? Here we can see this little critter. It belongs to the weevil family. And this is a weevil, uh, acorn weevil. So the weevil family comprises many insects. The majority of them are tree pests and parasites. Uh, one of the best known uh, insects from the weevil family is the bark beetle. Uh, it's also responsible for um, a lot of damage in, in forests, a lot of damage to trees. They're creating those uh, tunnels under the bark, damaging the tree, and damaging the timber. Um, however, the oak ambrosia beetle is also an ambrosia beetle, and this is quite important. So ambrosia beetles are not a taxonomic group. It's not about how closely related they are to one another. It's a functional group, an ecological group uh, of beetles that share a certain lifestyle. And that lifestyle uh, is related to uh, tree pathogenic, uh, tree parasitic fungi that they're in symbiosis with. So despite this name, oak eating, like the oak ambrosia beetle doesn't really eat oaks. It doesn't feed on oaks. Uh, it feeds on the fungus that is an oak parasite. Um, and the oak ambrosia beetle forms an obligatory symbiosis with Raphaelea quercivora. It's an ascomycota fungi, ascomycota fungus, that requires this relation for spreading. Actually, those beetles, oh, here we can see a colony of the fungus. Uh, these beetles have special organs on their back they use to carry spores of the fungus. The fungus can't spread from one tree to another on its own. Uh, be the beetle carries spores of the fungus to a new tree then the fungus grows there in the tunnels made by the beetle. The fungus makes, uh, causes the disease, makes the tree sick, and the beetle feeds on the fungal hypha. And in the tunnels, it also lays eggs. The larvae, as well, feed on the fungus. When they turn into imago, the adult beetles, they carry the fungus with them and move to a new they move to a new tree. So we can see that this relation between the beetle and fungus is very close. And here we can see a life cycle of the ambrosia beetle. So beetles with the fungus with the fungal spores infect a tree. Uh, they enter the tree of open holes, bore holes in the tree. The fungus spreads inside and slowly kills the tree. And in the same time, the beetles are 
laying eggs inside of the tree. When larvae hatch, they feed on the fungus, they turn into adults and the cycle. In the meantime, the, tr the tree dies and this cycle starts over. And here we can see the range of the oak ambrosia beetle. It's mostly found in Asia. As we can see, it, actually in Japan, it has its northern uh, limit of its distribution. So it's not found in Hokkaido, although we'll get back to this in a second. So, finally, the Japanese oak world disease caused by the Ambrosia fungus. So, what is the Japanese oak world disease? Uh, the beetle infects weak, weak trees with the fungus. And the fungus destroys phloem, destroys uh, parts of the wood that transport water and minerals and nutrients. As such, the tree slowly withers. Uh, and and dies. The beetle attacks different species of oaks primarily, but also can sometimes affect other trees in the Hagatze family. However, Konara and Mizunara are most affected, and Mizunara in particular is less resistant than Konara, and even relatively strong trees can be killed by the fungus. So the thing is, the beetle can't easily uh, affect healthy and strong trees. It mostly moves, spreads to weakened trees. Um, however, In a second. So first, let's, let's think about the symptoms. So we have holes in the tree bark. These are the holes that the beetle is opening and using to enter the tree. Uh, sawdust under the trees, because the beetles are not actually eating the wood, they're not eating the oak. They are removing sawdust as they're boring the tunnels, and the sawdust can be found on the bottom of the tree. Uh, very often we can see toothpicks, so-called toothpick structures, on branches and, and trunks of infected trees. These are, uh, these are made of that sawdust that sticks together with, uh, with, with the tree before it falls down. It has been pushed out, and like we'll see a picture of it in a second. And finally, when enough phloem is damaged, and the water flow in the tree mostly stops, the, the tree uh, dies, we can see leaves uh, withering and dropping, and smaller, smaller branches tend to break off. As I said, the disease mostly impacts weakened trees, or at least that used to be the case for a long time. And also, the distribution of the beetle was limited to Honshu. It wasn't found in Hokkaido. However, both these things are changing. And uh, one of the leading hypotheses for this is that it has to do with the uh, warming climate. The beetle is limited by temperature in its distribution. And as the, in particular, the, the winters are becoming more warm, uh, it becomes possible for the beetle to survive in Hokkaido. And actually, in 2020, there was a paper released reporting the first sighting of this beetle uh, in the Hakodate area. Um, part of the problem is that there are species of oaks in Hokkaido uh, that are not found south from that region. They're extremely susceptible to the Japanese oak wilt disease. They're not, these trees are not 
used to dealing with with this disease, and as such, they don't have defensive mechanisms uh, protecting them from this disease. As such, even relatively healthy trees can be killed by uh, by the disease by the fungus. Moreover, uh, even on Honshu here at the ICU campus as well, the warming climate in this region causes two things. One is it's beneficial for the beetle and the fungus, so it's easier for them to, to thrive. So it's easier to them, it's easier for, uh, for them to infect even relatively strong trees because of the climate, because of, of warmer temperatures. But at the same time, those rising temperatures cause stress to oak trees. They cause temperature stress, and they might be a uh, reason for, uh, they might contribute to causing water stress when the trees don't get enough water, the water evaporates. And as such, more trees are weakened. So we have this, uh, we have this, loop here where basically the, the fungus and the insect are stronger and the trees are getting weaker. As such, the disease that existed for many years in the past, in recent years, is becoming more of, the pro more of a problem. And here we have some pictures that uh, Professor Hitzer took at the campus. We can see a conara tree with withering leaves and some branches here as well. Here we can see all the leaves and smaller branches are already gone. Here are some holes where the beetles have infected the tree and the sold sawdust that they're removing from their tunnels. And this is a different picture, not from the campus, but we can see those toothpick structures. So basically that's uh, sawdust that sticks together, that's being pushed out of the tunnels by female beetles that, that are digging them. So as I said, there's the, because of the warming climate, at least that's the, the leading hypothesis, we have observed the beetles spreading north, and we have reports of the beetles being found in Hokkaido. Also, so far, we have no reports of the beetle spreading to America, but it is a huge concern at the moment, because if it does, many species of oaks that can be found in America uh, would, might be quite badly affected, as, as they're not used similarly to the Hokkaido oaks. They're not used to this disease and to this parasite. And the problem is that the beetle can be transported in different wood products. So as Japan and America are trading wood and wood products, uh, there is a risk of of sending these uh, parasites, tree parasites, and Japanese ambros uh, ambrosia, oak ambrosia beetles to, to America. Many other parasites, plant parasites, have been spread to America in similar way in the past. So what are some countermeasures? What can we do to deal with, with this problem? Um, unfortunately, there are no natural enemies to the ambrosia beetle. Uh, in the past, it was only affecting weaker trees, so it wasn't a real problem, and we didn't need to do much about it. We, don't ha we haven't developed many tools to treat this condition. And after the tree is affected, uh, there's not much that we can do to save it. So, our best 
available countermeasures are removing infected trees so that new beetles can't infect further trees in, in the region at a given location, uh, removing weak trees that might potentially be susceptible to infection, um, protecting tr trees with pesticides, although, as I said, because the disease was not an issue for a long time, we don't really have many pesticides that work against this particular beetle that are being developed uh, currently. And another thing is controlling the beetle population. So, for example, using different traps to reduce the population of the beetle. And here are some other tree, uh, pictures from the ICU campus. Uh, here's a tree that is affected and operations to, to remove trees like that are being done at ICU. Um, oh, another thing that I haven't mentioned is when the fungus affects phloem and the wood, it causes those dark or black uh, stains. And that's another thing, like we can't really see that when the tree is growing, but after cutting it down, we can recognize that it was affected by the fungus by those discolorations in the wood. And here are some pheromone traps with alcohol. The pheromone attracts the beetles, and after they slide into alcohol, they can't uh, leave the trap. In addition to the references, I actually have some further recommended reading, uh, further reading to recommend. Uh, these two papers are quite informative on the problem. They explain a lot when it comes to the biology of the Ambrosia fungus and the beetle and its spread and how changes in climate might contribute to this problem. So if anyone is interested, I really recommend uh, looking, uh, reading these two. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.